Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our small footprint. Happy Mother's Day to any of those mothers in my area who are celebrating and hope you have a great day. A another shortish one from me today. We did the rest of the pizza dough. So I showed you how I made the pizza once we got to the evening um, and I showed you what the how the garlic paste ended up, which is lovely. And I don't know, I made salsa. <laughs> I did whatever needed doing as per usual in the kitchen and I shared it with you. So I hope you enjoy and I will see you again next time. Probably not tomorrow, uh, probably the day after. Have a great day. So this is the pizza dough from last night. It's risen up and filled this container, if a little more than filled it because of the size of the batch. Sometimes I split this into two containers, but it was pretty cold last night, so I wasn't overly concerned that it was going to overfill the containers. So what I do the next morning is I pull it out and I divide it into pieces. So this is a batch that makes me eight 300 gram-ish balls, which is perfect for our family. I'll put the ingredients in the comments. And I divide it into those eight 300 gram-ish bundles and then I turn them all into balls. So I use semolina in the base of the trays that I'm going to put them in and I sprinkle some semolina over them as I put them in so the balls don't stick to each other. And I create a nice tight skin over the shaped balls so that they will hold their shape and stay in, a, in that shape in the fridge. So I shape them all nice, firm, tight skins on them and then sprinkle them in semolina. They all get stacked into the trays. I just use ceramic baking trays because that's what's convenient and I have two different sizes of them and I put them into those trays, put cling wrap or beeswax wrap depending on what I've got on hand. My beeswax wraps have gone missing at the moment so I'm using a lot of cling wrap unfortunately. I need to make myself some more beeswax wraps. I have all the stuff to do it, I just haven't got around to doing it. And then they go in the fridge for the day. So they will stay in the fridge for the day and I'll bring them out about half an hour before I'm ready to bake them this evening. So what I decided to do with the garlic paste is to spread it all out onto a baking tray. So these are half sheets and I used some baking paper that I measured out to be the same size and I just poured all the smoked garlic paste onto the sheet and spread it out as evenly as possible but I wasn't overly concerned because I'm not trying to get any exact measurements with this and spread it all out. Then I found one of the kids rulers just a plastic ruler and I cleaned it obviously <laughs> and then used a little bit of olive oil on the side that I was using and I scored the sheet of garlic paste as evenly as I could but again I'm not going for perfection here. Just tried to get it all the way down to the base but knowing that if it had a significant amount of depth to it that it would be easy enough to break even if I have to let it defrost very slightly before I break it and then go back into the freezer it's not going to hurt. And then that way I could break all the little cubes off, stick them in a Ziploc bag and store them in the freezer. And the idea is that in such small pieces that it should be fairly easy to uh, pull them out and let them defrost for a couple of minutes to use. I don't imagine that I'd want to use this garlic in something like early in the cooking process. Definitely use raw garlic earlier in the cooking process if you're going to cook it. But this is already cooked and already a good texture and all that sort of thing and lots of flavor. So I'd be more inclined to put it through in the end, like to mix it through a pasta dish when the pasta dish is warm or uh, to break up and put chunks on the pizza and then cook the pizza because the pizza doesn't take very long to cook. Uh, maybe stirring it through sauteed veggies. Maybe I should do some cast iron potatoes and then stir this through the cast iron potatoes because it should just be a buttery, garlicky type dressing almost, I'd imagine. But it's, it's easy enough to just break against those score lines and put into chunks and then into a Ziploc bag and then I will store it in the freezer as discussed. I still had one box of tomatoes that I had neglected. I really should have got to this box before now, but life happens and I didn't. So I finally got to it today. Most of them were okay. There were some ones with some big spots that I had to cut out, but the majority of the box was okay. Uh, 
so I did all the normal things with it that I did in the last video. I cut them into chunks, removed the cores, and then used the Thermomix to get them up into a diced, fine dice, diced up onions, diced up the jalapenos and the um, pineapple chilies and some shishito peppers and things like that. Put that and the uh, lemon juice and garlic and there was something else. Um, what else do I put in there? Tomato paste and a bit of sugar. Put it all in the pot and got it going. So that was just going in the background while I was going doing everything else. The kids requested more mandarin cakes and we still have half a box of mandarins in the freezer. So I did some of those. Now I'm going to try, you can can whole oranges uh, and I haven't done it yet but I'm going to try it but I think I might try a couple of these mandarins as well and you can you boil them first and then can them and I reckon that if I cut it open got the pips out and then shoved them in a jar that I could fit the five in one of my jars and not have to add any more liquid because the liquid would come out of the mandarins because you're piercing them into the jar so I'm going to test that theory so long as they're still five mandarins to try but I kind of don't want to can just one jar of something either so I kind of need something else to try at the same time so that I'm running the canner for a purpose but I'm going to give it a go but the kids really enjoyed the mandarin cakes and so I decided to do that again and I will try and get navel oranges in bulk when they are available and can them up the same way theoretically we'll give it a go we'll see how it goes once the salsa had simmered for 30 minutes, as per how I make it, it had to go into jars. So this is just it going into jars. Now I have a huge range of jars here. I have some lug lids that are X jam jars, some Fowler's Vicola jars, and some Ball Mason jars. Salsa I like to go in the sort of 500ml size, and I have discovered whilst increasing my canning loads that I don't have many jars in that 500ml sort of size. I have larger, um, I have a, a bunch of 600 mil, 900 mil, 1200 mil sort of sizing, but I don't have much in that 500 mil size. So I'm going to have to buy some more jars for that. And I knew that. I knew that I didn't have quite enough jars. Well, I definitely don't have enough jars to do uh, a whole year worth of food. And that's the aim is to have each seasonal item 12 months of each seasonal item on the shelf so that you have it for the 12 months and then you can it again in the next 12 months that is the aim eventually anyway we'll see how we go with that uh, so I had two canners full with this so I, I put them in the I use my pressure canner pots because that's convenient two layers water to an inch above bring it to a full boil and then it goes for 20 minutes uh, at a full boil in these things. The little bits floating in the water are just bits of salsa that must have been on the outside of the jars there. So we had pizza for dinner. Uh, this is how I prepare our pizza. So I do it in rectangles because it's convenient because it cuts evenly and children are children but it also fits in the oven slightly better. I am looking at getting myself a little wood pellet um, like a little uh, freestanding pizza oven. We have the wood stove that does cook pizza, but the problem is, is that even for eight pizzas, you use a lot of wood to get it up to heat, cook all the pizzas, and then there's still a lot of heat there. And I don't always have something I can throw in afterwards and it feels like a waste. So I use it for roasts and stuff and breads that take an hour to cook and all that sort of stuff. But using it for pizza seems somewhat wasteful on the wood side of things. So I'd like to get a small one because like the little freestanding ones only take like 90 seconds per pizza to cook and you can just put enough wood pellets or wood chips in to allow for those pizza cooks that by the end you're not wasting any fuel but I'd like to get away from using my gas as much as I am so the idea is that I'm going to look at one of them Vivo has some for only 200 and something dollars so it might be something I invest in in the near future to make pizza night a little quicker and a little easier and I can make them circular then which will even be better for the kids because then all the pieces have the same amount of crust unlike the corner and middle pieces that a rectangle gives you so I put whatever we have on these pizzas this one's these ones have pulled pork corn pineapple um, <clears throat> salami 
I don't know. I have run out of pizza sauce. It's something else that I need to can up shortly. So I just used a jar of my roasted tomatoes and a spoonful of the barbecue plum sauce to go on it. Uh, the kids and Daryl don't have any cheese, so they go in without cheese. And then they come when they come out, we put uh, homemade mayo on the top as their cheese. I do make cashew cheese for their pizzas regularly, but I haven't got any at the moment because I haven't got any cashews. I still haven't ordered that in. It's ordering the bulk nuts and stuff is a little bit of a juggle money wise. Um, so I have to figure out when I'm going to do that, but I have to do that shortly because I have no cashews left. I have some almond meal and stuff because I could get that at a good price at Costco, but I couldn't get any decent cashew prices. So when they come out of the oven, this is what they look like. So thank you very much for joining me again today. I didn't film anything yesterday, so I probably won't have a video out for you tomorrow. I will have a day off and then we will see how we go following that. We still have, I still have the pork to make all the sausages with, but we, my blade hasn't turned up in the mail. It's been delayed somewhere. Um, so I don't know what I'm doing yet with that. Uh, but I will see you again shortly anyway and share everything that has to do with our lives and kitchen here as much as possible. See you next time.